Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to our first episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. The Race Face family of drivers consists of 15 drivers competing in everything from the NASCAR Xfinity level to quarter midgets and range in age from 6 years old to 23. Each week we will bring you the latest results from across the country and keep you up to speed on what's coming up next. Throughout this episode, I would like to introduce you to our 2022 Race Face family of drivers, starting with Anthony Alfredo, who is 22 years old from Ridgefield, Connecticut, competing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for our motorsports and the number 23 Dude Wipe Chevrolet. Sheldon Creed is 23 years old, from Al Cajon, California, driving the number two Whelan Engineering Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing. Jesse Love, 17 years old, from Menlo Park, California, driving the number 20 Crescent Tools Toyota Camry for Venturini Motorsports, and the number 21 Mobile One Super Late Model for Wimmer Motorsports. Joey East is 19 years old, from Madera, California, competing in the Arkham Menard Series West in the number 88 Richwood Meets Ford for Nate Clower Motorsports. Now let's get to some race results from the weekend where we had five drivers in action with many seeing the track for the very first time in 2022. Anthony Alfredo made his third NASCAR Xfinity start of the season at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in his Our Motorsports number 23 Dude Wipe Chevrolet. Anthony's coming off of two top 10 finishes, a seventh at Daytona, where he had to fight his way back from three laps down due to a right side window issue in the opening laps, and a fifth last week at Auto Club Speedway, where he was competing for the win before a late race red flag hampered his tire strategy. Let's check in with Anthony for a post-race recap from Vegas. P17 here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Just had a smooth race, a quiet race, kept our nose clean so that our dude wife Chevrolet can uh, head to Atlanta in a couple weeks as well. Uh, had to dive down pit road at the end and miss a big wreck, so that probably cost us a top 15, but uh, another day of building and on to the next one. Anthony currently sets eighth in points as he completes the West Coast Swing on Saturday at Phoenix Raceway. Sheldon Creed was also at Las Vegas in his number two Whelan Trent Shoring RCR Chevrolet. Sheldon qualified eighth, but had to start from the rear in a backup car due to his accident at Auto Club Speedway the week before. We were able to catch up with Sheldon for his take on the race. Hey guys, just uh, wrapping up our day here from Las Vegas. Um, pretty up and down for us, fast car, pretty much all day there, but uh, had to come from the back because we had went to a backup car from uh, California's race. So um, yeah, made it tough there at the beginning. Uh, was getting through the crowd pretty good there and um, kind of got caught up in somebody else's mess there and got us off singlet with tires. Um, yeah, and kind of uphill battle there the first two stages. Worked our way back up into contention, fighting inside the top 10 sped on pit road, um, kind of put ourselves in a hole again there, lap down, got our lap back, uh, and then was able to battle back inside the top 10 for a seventh place finish. So uh, proud of everyone, thankful for Wheel and Trent Shoring and Chevrolet and everyone at RCR that, that's uh, behind us and on our team. We got really fast cars, just uh, I think there's a couple of things to clean up on my end. Cars are fast and uh, yeah, looking forward to the week's coming. Sheldon now has two top 10 finishes in his first three starts. That includes the season opener sixth place finish at Daytona and currently sets 14th in points heading to one of his favorite tracks, Phoenix Raceway on Saturday. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we'll meet four more of the race face drivers, plus check in on Caden Honeycutt and Brody Moore's weekend and this week's track facts with Grant Thompson. Hi, my name is Cole Denton, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. 
Let's now meet the next four race face drivers. Connor Mozak is 23 years old from Charlotte, North Carolina, competing full time in the Pirelli Trans Am Series for Scott Legacy Racing and Select Arca Menard Series events for Brett Holmes Racing. And he will make his NASCAR Xfinity debut in the number 18 Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota at Portland International Raceway. Caden Honeycutt is 18 years old from Alito, Texas, returning to the Solid Rock Cars Tour for Barry Nelson and the number 12 Solid Rock Carriers Autos by Nelson Chevrolet. Caden will also run select pro late model events for Jet Motorsports and dirt late models in his own car. Cassidy Hines is 18 years old from Arvada, Colorado and will return to her number 88 Friends of Jacqueline Pro Late Model with Nate Clower Motorsports for select SRL and Nut Up Pro Late Model events and the number 3C family owned Super Late Model at Colorado National Speedway. Grant Thompson is 16 years old from Mobile, Alabama and will compete in select Pro Late Model events in the Southeast and Super Late Model events with Casey Johnson Racing in the Midwest. Now for some more results from last weekend. Caden Honeycutt went hunting for the Bears at Montgomery Motor Speedway in the 58th running of the Alabama 200 and the Modifieds of Mayhem 58. Caden was in the number 21 of Sotex Motorsports for the 58 lap modified race and the number nine of Jet Motorsports for the Pro Late Model event. Let's check in with the driver and get his take on the weekend. Hey everybody, it's Kate Nuncutt here and we are done at the Alabama 200 and the modified right here, we ended up starting uh, P5 after the invert, uh, ultimately qualified eighth, but we were able to make it all the way up to third. Really strong run with this car. Uh, hopefully we get to do it again. Thank uh, Sotex Motorsports, my dad for all the hard work and uh, we worked on this thing a long time. Uh, we were ultimately able to get a good finish out of it and a good field of cars in the modified uh, Mayhem. Also in the Alabama 200 and the Pro Late model, we ultimately had a mechanical failure. Uh, we just struggled all weekend uh, with parts going bad, a motor went bad on us. Um, we rebounded very quickly and we were able to qualify sixth and we hung around in the top five for a uh, majority of the race and uh, we ultimately had a mechanical failure around uh, lap 100 and when stuff started getting bad and we decided to pull off and we found some bad stuff on it but uh, it's sometimes how it goes but uh, we I just think can't thank Jack Motorsports, Pat, Jack, Greg, all of our crew that worked so hard over that weekend and uh, we're just going to try and go back next weekend with Cars Tour first weekend 30 grand and we're going to start off with Nelson Motorsports and we're going to go with Chase, Chase after another title in the 2022 Late Mall Stock Car Tour. Up next for Caden Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour with Barry Nelson Motorsports for the season opener at Caraway Speedway on Saturday. Brody Moore opened up his 2022 season at Madera Speedway in Madera, California in round one of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Brody was back in the seat of his number 78 Charlie Wilson Motorsports prepared Chevrolet. To say he started off the season in dominating fashion would be an understatement. We caught up with Brody right after the race. Hey everyone, we're back here at Madeira Speedway for run number one of the televised MAV-TV 5150 Junior Late Model Series. And I couldn't be more happy to tell you that we were able to bring home the win tonight, where we led every lap start to finish. We were able to back up our performance in my first Pro Late Model race where I finished second in the season finale last year. I'd like to thank Kenny Shepard and all of his team for running one of the best programs in the country. And I couldn't do this without the help of my sponsors, California Apartment Association's Valley Insurance Plan, ARM Multi-Insurance Services, and their premier carrier, Amtrust North America, Race Face Advancement, and Friends of Jacqueline. I couldn't do it without all the help of them. Thank you. Up next for Brody, Junior Late Models at Madera Speedway on April 2nd. Here is this week's Track Facts with Grant Thompson. Hey everyone, Grant here. So today I'm going to be talking about Mobile International Speedway. It is located in Mobile, Alabama. 
It is a half mile, 70 degree banking, fast racetrack. The track classes are the Pure Stocks, Sportsman's, Pro Trucks, Outlaw Late Models, Modifieds, and the Pro Late Models. They race on Saturday nights, and April the 9th is their season opener and the big event for this year. My personal history at the racetrack was that I was the 2019 Pro Truck Track Champion. I was also the youngest winner to win a heat race and a feature in the same night at 12 years old. That's going to do it for this week's Track Facts. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll check in on junior late model driver Casey Klein, and we'll have our Meet the Driver with Jesse Love. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Cassidy Hines, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Let's now meet some of the other Race Face drivers. Jake Bowman is 14 years old from Huntington Beach, California. Jake will drive the number 25 Pro Late model for Rackley War at Nashville Fairground Speedway. Brody Moore is 15 years old from Highland Ranch, Colorado, and will return to the 5150 Junior Late Model Series at Madera Speedway for Charlie Wilson's Motorsports in the number 78 CAA Value Insurance Program Chevrolet and Super Late Models at Colorado National Speedway. Hudson Bulger is 14 years old from Perry, Georgia, returns to the INEX Legend Car Series, and will compete in a pro late model later in the season. Casey Klein is 13 years old, competing in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series at Madera Speedway for Nate Clower Motorsports. Casey will also run select pro and super late model events in the Northwest. Speaking of Casey Klein, he was at Madera Speedway for round one of the 5150 Junior Late Model season opener in his number 88 Nate Clower Motorsports Ford. Casey qualified seventh and battled fellow race face driver Brody Moore for the win. Let's get a post-race recap from the driver. I'm Casey Klein. This weekend I was racing at Madera Speedway in Madera, California. I ended up qualifying 7th, um, there was a redraw but I missed it, so I ended up starting 7th. Um, I was bound with the 78 all the way up to the halfway break and I ended up getting 2nd at the halfway break and then for the last half of the race I ended up getting in some battles and getting some unlucky restarts and then I got shuffled back a couple spots but I battled my way back up to the second position and then we got a restart late in the race and so I had a five lap shootout and me and the 78 battled until the end of the race and I ended up finishing second he ended up finishing first. Up next for Casey, junior late models at Madera Speedway on April 2nd. It's now time for this week's Meet the Driver featuring Jesse Love. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jesse Love. I'm 17 years old from Menlo Park, California, now living in Charlotte. I'm a two-time late model champion, a Legend Core World Champion, a six-time USAC Speed 2 Champion, and two-time and defending Arc West Champion. This year, I'm competing in super late model marquee events all across the country, as well as the Arc Menard Series for Venture Motorsports. Thanks, Jesse. That young man is headed for stardom. The common word in that piece was champion. We're headed out for our last commercial break, and when we come back, we'll meet the remaining race face drivers and get up to speed with Caden Honeycutt in his quest to win the eNASCAR iRacing Coca-Cola Series, plus a quick rundown on this weekend's races. Hi, my name is Joey East, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. It's now time to meet the Race Face Next drivers. First, Cole Denton. He's 11 years old from Pasagoula, Mississippi and competes in the INEX Bandolero Series. Cole is chasing a national championship in 2022 after finishing second in the nation in 2021. Carter Whalen is a 12-year-old from Cumming, Georgia and returns to the USAC and QMA Quarter Midget Series 
in a variety of different classes, including Heavy Honda, Heavy 160, and Heavy World Formula, driving for Landon Cox Racing. Carter is scheduled to begin his pro truck debut later in the year. Landon Cox is our youngest driver at the age of seven from Monroe, Georgia, competing in the USAC and QMA quarter midget series in both Junior Honda and Junior Animal. Race face driver Caden Honeycutt is not only competing in the Cars Tour, pro late models and dirt late models, but also drives in the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series. Entering its 13th season, featuring 40 of the world's best sim racers who will compete for their share of over $300,000. And whoever sits atop in points at the end will walk away with an impressive $100,000. Let's check in with Caden for a quick recap on his first two races. Hey everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt here. Uh, I'm actually in my sim right now, as you can see. Uh, we just give you guys a recap on how the Coke series has gone for the iRacing Pro Series. Uh, we've had a rough start to the year so far. Daytona uh, started 34th and uh, finished 34th after a lap one crash. Uh, I took out a bunch of cars, unfortunately, were involved in it. And uh, moved on to Vegas uh, not too long ago and started 40th after uh, some mishap in qualifying. And uh, literally wrecked on lap number two. Uh, there were like 15 cars piled up in front of us and not really much for us to go. Um, so we've had some tough luck the first two races, but uh, we got Atlanta next Tuesday. Uh, we've already been working on the set and we are still feel, uh, we still feel pretty good about it. Um, there's a lot to learn with this car and uh, we're going to hit it hard at Atlanta and we got plenty of races to make it up. So we're going to work hard and uh, try to get there. Also bought some uh, new V3 pedals that I much needed that will improve uh, my sim racing. So um, we're going to get to work at Atlanta in next week and we're going to see uh, if we can turn our luck around in our season and go forward and try to win some races and uh, get in the playoffs is uh, the ultimate goal. I want to give a special shout out to Cole Denton who swept all five races at the 2022 INEX Winter Nationals at Citrus County Speedway or earlier in the year. Cole has accumulated nine wins, three seconds, and a third in 13 starts. This kid is on a roll. The Race Face family of drivers are proud to support the Friends of Jacklin Foundation, a 501c3 charitable organization supporting children and their families battling pediatric cancer. I had a chance to sit down with FOJ founder Dennis Murphy and get his take on what Race Face has meant to his mission. We are now um, have over 875 children adopted in Division One, Two, Three Junior College High School, uh, 34 different sports, and we're branching out into the uh, the arts and music. And it's been a uh, 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 an unbelievable phenomenon working in the race world since we've started um, partnering with Race Face. The drivers that have adopted children and the visibility and the awareness that they have ra they have raised. Um, I, I, we can't, we can't measure. We can't measure. Um, people are coming out of their bedrooms. Other children are coming out of their bedrooms to get adopted uh, because they're race facing the drivers. Um, and every lap that one of these vehicles goes around the track is more awareness. I'm sitting here and, and, and race face has got several drivers and I don't care what place they come in as long as they don't crash. Uh, the more every lap that they go around and they raise awareness and they see the FOJ logo out there, people are asking about it, inquiring about it, and um, the uh, the awareness is being spread. Um, it's it's powerful. It's so powerful that the drivers that have adopted children already uh, can see the immediate um, gratification on the smile from that child with the brain tumor or cancer. But what they don't know is other children have come out of their bedrooms. They don't know them, they'll never see them and never meet them, but they've changed more lives. So the breadth and the depth of what, what, what Race Face and these drivers are doing for our pediatric brain tumor community, it can't be measured and it's incredible. And we are so grateful and appreciative. Other Race Face drivers seeing action this weekend include Jesse Love, who will be at Phoenix International Raceway for the Arca Menard Series General Tire 150 with Venturini Motorsports. Joey East will also be at Phoenix for the General Tire 150 
with Nate Clower Motorsports. Connor Mozak will complete the list of race face drivers at Phoenix for the season opener and he will be driving for Brett Holmes Racing. Carter Whalen will be at New Smyrna QMA for the opening round of the Dixie Shootout on Saturday. Landon Cox will be competing in round one of the Dixie Shootout at New Smyrna as well. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.